All right, family, you already know what time it is. It's Tasha Mom, Mayor Prepping. Get your drink, pull up, let's talk about it. So I made a mistake. I mentioned that I had done this video before and I looked and I looked and I looked through every single video and I had not done this video on ways to stay warm with no electricity. I had done the opposite of ways to cool your home and keep your your warm, your warm home cooler, right? Um, with no electricity, right? And for some reason I thought I had done this and I can't find it, I don't, I don't believe, I think I've touched on this topic in different grid down videos, but I haven't um, dedicated a video to it. So we're gonna talk about ways that you can stay warm with no electricity, right? You have no power, um, it's, it's winter time, it's cold outside, maybe it's not even super cold, but as soon as that, you know, electricity goes off and that heat source goes off, trust me, that temperature goes down and you're gonna notice it, okay? And so it becomes, how do you still keep your family comfortable um, enough at least for to get through grid down, no power? So I'm gonna just tell you some preps and things that we have done that we have in our preps um, to prepare for this and what we will absolutely be doing, okay? So you can take this video as a, you know, hey, here's things you can do, get a pen and paper because there's all types of items or products or things that I'll talk about. Um, in case you don't have them, you can write them down. So it's almost kind of like a list of things that you can get, um, but not exactly, okay? So I broke this up in several areas, you guys. I broke it up in alternate heating sources, cold weather gear. I wanna talk about entry points specifically. Um, I wanna talk about other small hacks that you can do that I've learned um, over the years and just a couple tips, okay? So let's start with the, the, the obvious, right? Alternate heating source, boom, you don't have heat, what do you do? Okay, obviously, if you are able or you already have a wood stove in your home or a fireplace in your home already, then boom, you're good to go in regards to, you kill a lot of stones, you, you kill a lot of stones, you kill a lot of birds with this one stone, right? You have a fireplace or wood stove, you now have alternate heat, you have a place to possibly cook. Um, you might have some lighting off, off, off of that if it's um, you know a fireplace and it has a lot of illuminations. So there's several things that you get out of that, okay? So if you have that already, fantastic. What I would do is prep the things that are needed to use that, right? Prep the wood, keep the wood, keep matches, longer matches, all the things to be, especially if you don't do that on a regular basis. And I would pay right now to have a fireplace person come, check out your fireplace and make sure that it's safe, it's good to go, it's clean, it's ready to go especially if you're somebody who doesn't use the wood stove all the time um, or you um, ha don't use the fireplace all the time. Like it's not a regular thing. Um, you need to get it checked out, make sure it's good to go. Weatherize it in whatever way that you need to now and just make sure that it's ready to go so that you can employ that. If not, the second best thing is, do you live somewhere where you have the option to upgrade and get you a wood stove, okay? Wood stoves, you can get wood stoves for about 250. The small cutie ones, um, for about 250 um, cast iron right and it goes all the way up okay again you would have to have some fireplace people come in because you would have to make sure you have your brick layout your your backsplash all your your fireproofing stuff for that to, to do the hole for the, the stove pipe if you don't have that already maybe you can go out a wall you're gonna bring in the experts basically to install that okay so if it's possible you know do that now I know a ton of people watching this they're like Tasha I, don't, I live in an apartment or I live in a rental. I have no, you know, or I live in a condo. I have no way to do that, um, you know, as far as upgrading and getting one. And that's fine, okay? So let's talk about some other options. You have Buddy Heater is a very popular one. Buddy Heater is a heater that you can use inside your home and it's run off of propane, okay? Propane bottles, um, any size, right? So you can bring in the 20 pounder. Um, I just like smaller amounts. I like the one pounders and bring those in and those, um, you know, claim that they're safe to use inside, okay? So buddy heaters, any kind of kerosene type, um, alcohol, you're gonna look for alternate heating sources that take different fuels um, and be researching to make sure that it's safe to run in your house. Most of them will say that they're still safe to run in your house, but with ventilation. Now that's tricky 
right? Um, because you're indoors and you're somewhere where you're trying, the whole point of having a buddy heater is because you're trying to stay warm. And so the minute you're opening windows and ventilating, you know, that can be an issue. So just make sure you do your research, really look what's on the market, really read the reviews, read what people say, read what safety measures and it says you have to have in place and what people are doing to use those heaters. Um, another thing is, uh, let's see, buddy here. Oh, heat stones. So there's all types of terracotta pots, heat stones, right? Heat bricks, different things that you can set up in an area, you know, light something as, as far as a small can of alcohol, um, a, a, a small can that you put some tea lights and some other candles in. And then that heat, that little bit of heat, could, um, you know, heats up those bricks and those bricks then heat the room, okay? And get quite hot. <coughs> so take a look at those options. Remember, you have to be able to do that in a safe manner. Can't just set that up anywhere. You know, what type of uh, wood and product, like what is on your counters? What would you have as your base plate? Um, a lot of people get a, get a, um, a metal pan that you would cook like cookies on um, and then you would have your little um, maybe a piece of wood or not have your little can with your alcohol or whatever it is you're gonna burn um, candle right tea lights tea lights do a lot of damage you guys and then you build these bricks around it and then they warm up and then they heat your they heat your home they heat the room okay not your your uh, whole house okay um, but look into that figure out now where you would set up those things right figure out now where you would safely set up heaters figure, figure out now where you would set up maybe some sort of heat stones okay figure that stuff out now all right uh, let's see the other option is if you have a, a solar bank, solar charger, um, and just running a small heater. Now, heaters take a lot of wattage though, and so oftentimes running heaters is, is gonna be way more difficult. You have to have a pretty good size, um, pretty good size uh, solar generator to be able to do that, okay? Um, but take a look at that. So that's alternate heating sources. Take a look at what's on the market. Um, I'd love to hear in the comments below if anybody else is using it, some other type of product that they like, please let people know in the comments below. Next thing is entry points. So entry points for me, um, this is our game plan. This is what we do. Any entry point that we're not using, windows, um, any extra doors, like our house has a lot of doors. We have a lot of windows. We are through the whole house, you guys, um, we are taking plastic wrap. So you're buying those um, rollouts, the rolls of plastic wrap. We're putting that over our windows. We're duct taping it. And then additionally, I'm hanging a blanket over that window, okay? I'm making sure that I'm sealing in everything, especially if this is a long-term, but listen, even like a few days of cold, I'm doing this right away. Like if, if, if it's known that something has come through and we know a storm has come through or something has happened where we know we're probably not going to get, um, you know, restored electricity right away, I'm doing this right away, okay, to hold in any heat that's already in here, putting the plastic wrap up, duct tape around, uh, and then blankets, okay? And you can just push pin blankets depending on how heavy it is, maybe nails, like if you have heavy duty. Um, what I found is every time we've moved, we've ended up with a couple of those really heavy um, moving blankets. Those are amazing for this. Um, and then obviously if you can buy those, but if not, wool blankets, heavy blankets, you'll put over that, okay? It's just gonna help a little bit more. Also the bottom, so you're taping, if you have a draft, you're either taking that plastic all the way down past the door jam and tape it literally past it to the floor, okay? So you make sure you get all of that, the whole entire door structure, okay? So plastic, duct tape, blankets, okay? Just the plastic alone is going to be helpful, okay? Obviously, you can't do this with all doors. Um, so getting socks, right? Getting old socks, filling them with rice, sewing up the edge, putting those at the bottom of your doors. Even at the bottom of like, think about your internal doors, right? All your bedroom doors, stuff like that. It really depends on the dynamic of your home, if you're gonna leave those doors or not. But a lot of people say, hey, condense down to one room or one area. And so you're doing that by closing doors and then you're gonna have those socks. Um, and you can buy these things too, you guys. There's all types of things on the market for the bottom, um, you know, the snakes that you buy to put at the bottom of doors, okay? So get those, but get those for the internal doors. People don't normally think about that, but in this type of situation, you're trying to 
um, close off possibly airflow. And so you're going to be wanting to put those, you know, those snakes at the bottom of those internal doors to keep that cold air from going to room to room, especially if you're trying to condense down. Okay. Um, so socks, uh, the little snakes, heavy blankets, uh, in general, I mentioned the moving blankets are great. Um, wool blankets are the best and, um, and or blackout curtains. So let's say you don't have a whole lot of money in regards to, I can't go out and buy fancy moving blankets. I can't go and buy the wool blankets. Just take a look at pricing. Um, blackout curtains might be, um, cheaper, right? Or you might even be able to get some blackout material on sale where you just put that. So it's blackout, but I say blackout because, um, one, you're doing a couple things. One, you're helping with light discipline. If that is an issue, something you need to do. But also, blackout curtains tend to be a little bit thicker, and so then you can put them on there. Now, there's all sorts of other products too. There's film and different things that you, um, different blinds, types of blinds that you can get that um, will help keep the heat out, right? So there's film you can put on your windows. There's blinds, okay? You want blinds the closest to the window as possible. That helps with heat and cooling, okay? The closer the blind is, um, that dead air, it's not fighting it, and then that helps as well, okay? So even that stuff, normally on your windows will help in general with your heat stuff okay all right let's talk about cold weather gear okay so having cold weather gear is important okay um having you know people think about cold weather gear that's for going outside in the snow whatever but having something as simple as let me just name a couple things right um socks gloves um, hats, right? The hats that go down. So beanies or hats that cover your head and your ears. If you can get that, if you can get a bacala, the whole cover thing that covers everything, that is helpful. If you're somewhere super, super cold, trust me, and you want to sleep in something like that because you are just frozen, that is helpful, okay? You can get that stuff and maybe it's not stuff you use all the time, but if it is dire need, like people will die from exposure if it, in certain situations if they're not staying warm, okay? So gloves, socks, with socks, heavy duty. Think about sports socks. Get the socks that go all the way up to their knees. Get all the kids a pair of those that go all the way up to the knees. You'd be surprised with just having socks that cover all the way to your knees and then you put on pants over that or sweats over that, how warm that that will keep you, okay? Um, sweatshirts, hoodies, that type of thing. Think about those things. Just look at every single kid, look at every single person. Make sure you have that in their wardrobe, jackets, things like that, that you have that, okay? Maybe with gloves, I don't know about you, but my kids, they always seem to, they can't find the other gloves. So maybe buying some of this stuff and then saving it, right? Putting it in a grid down box of some sort that you would take it out in an emergency and it's not for, you know, all the time, okay? <clears throat> so you don't have to worry about, hey, I'm trying to find it when you need it, okay? <clears throat> uh, I think I talked about that enough. Um, let's talk about, boom, boom, boom. Let's talk about some tips. So living in one space, I already talked about that, right? Condensing down to one big living area. That's just common sense because it's um, one area that everybody's in, everybody's breathing in, it's all marked off, and that heat stays in that room, especially if you're trying to heat it with a heat source as well, right? Um, that stuff matters if you block stuff off. This is a must have. You've got to have your carbon monoxide alarms set up throughout your house. You need to make sure you have extra batteries now. Again, if you had some sort of um, emergency grid down box just for this, you can make sure that you had extra batteries just for your carbon monoxide alarms so that, hey, grid down whatever, you can check them, test them. And if you're not comfortable too, uh, you could go ahead and go ahead and switch out the batteries at that point so you know you have fresh batteries going into the crisis or situation, okay? You've got to have that, especially if you are doing anything that's uh, unconventional, right? These buddy heaters, the fireplace, things that you're not used to doing, especially you should have them anyway if you have all this stuff, but um, you definitely need this stuff if you're doing anything, even like lots of candles, right? Um, even using a stove still, a gas stove, you want to have this alarm um, and have them throughout your home to make sure that you keep your family safe, okay? Think about other little things like hand warmers, right? Um, that you can heat up um, and, and give the kids. 
either with their sitting, but if they're about to go to bed, give them some warmers, they get under the blankets, whatever, and then they have some hand warmers, whatever the case may be. But have some emergency stuff, some emergency blankets, some emergency hand warmers. Think about that. Somebody mentioned the other day about um, uh, electric blankets, right? Um, you could do something like that. See if your small um, solar generators could probably run that, but that gets kind of um, a lot if you have people sleeping in different areas, okay? Um, well, let's talk about some hacks. So a hack I learned a long time ago is pop-up tents, right? If the kids are still gonna be determined, they wanna stay in their house, or maybe it's not as cold and you're still able to do the whole house, right? You you do the, the plastic and the blankets everywhere, you keep doors open and you're really trying to still halfway live in the in the home um a fun thing to do is get pop-up tents for the kids rooms or in the living room whatever for the bedrooms S pull up this pop-up tent and then that's where they sleep right you can pull their mattress into it or you can get your blow-up mattresses out or they can just sleep on the floor you guys um and then the other tip is sleeping bags so if you have the pop-up tent they get sleeping bags they get all their bedding from their beds maybe they put their mattress in there or not make it totally homey cozy warm and that body heat of them breathing and stuff is enclosed in that tent and will keep them warmer throughout the night okay and so you can do that in different rooms you can also make it fun maybe you get one of those hanging canopy tents that totally close same idea um, go ahead and do the wood fixture so that it's ready to hang when you do need it right in their room and then you have that and they sleep in that um, for for this okay maybe you don't have tents but just pulling out the sleeping bags and having them sleep in their beds but they're in their sleeping bags and their blankets are over again super super warm they're not going to be cold at all and they're going to be able to do everything that they need to do um to not be scared and get through the situation okay and then if they get cold they have kind of a safe place that they can go quickly get in that sleeping bag get warm they've got all their blankets and they're more than warm okay and that can happen whether people are staying in their rooms or we've kind of spilled out into one big open area okay and then again just one last thing for your shopping list is really um don't underestimate the the quality of a good quality wool blanket right um that's something that you have to have in your preps we make sure we have one for everybody in the home um that's good for bug out bags that's good for car kits that's good for this type of situation you're staying warm it's just another blanket that you can throw on bedding on top of bedding that's already there right on their beds um or throw in the tent or or throw on the you know you know you have throws and things like that on your couches and things like that but a wool blanket is is much much heavier um, if you have a lot of them that could be an option too for throwing over a window um, or a doorway that you're trying to block off that maybe doesn't have a door but it's like the hallway entry and you need to block it off right something heavy like a wool blanket would be nice so that's what I got for you guys. Uh, I hope you guys got some stuff from me. I'm looking forward to the comments below to getting some tips from you on um, things you've done, things you've heard, hacks and tips that you've heard of or experienced and done yourselves. Let's share the wealth and I will see you guys tomorrow in the next video. Take care. Bye.